gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. And welcome back to the show. I am your host, Mike David. Joining me today, please welcome my guest, Dana Martin. Dana, how are you doing today? Hi there. I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. Thanks for asking. And uh, like always, why don't you first put out your contact info or whatever is the best way for my audience to reach out to you for after the show. Well, you can reach me at deepthoughtswithdana.com to schedule a personal reading. And you can follow me on YouTube at Deep Thoughts with Dana. Awesome, and uh, I know you have our weekly reading for for this week, so why don't you go ahead and uh, take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Well, we're going to do this just like we always do. We're going to start from Aries and go all the way through to Pisces. This is your weekly energy, and when I'm talking about these these weekly energies, they can um, relate to love, work, family, relationships, money. However it resonates with you, that is the message for you. So don't box it into something. If I say a love relationship and it doesn't apply to you, don't box it in, okay? So here we go. We're going to start with Aries. Aries, you open this week trying to bring balance and prioritization into a situation regarding the stability and structure of your life or, or a relationship. You are letting go of fears and beginning to see things clearly. This causes you to make a very important judgment call in your life regarding this situation. You're, you're, you're not going to move forward in this current situation, and it, it causes um, some heartbreak and some grief and some sorrow. As the week progresses, you begin to turn your attention towards some situation in your life where there was all talk and no action, undelivered promises in the past. But this situation is, is, there's been some kind of injustice or dishonesty, some kind of unfairness in regards to a very important person in your life whom you have a lot of feelings and emotion. And you are beginning to address the situation, and you think that perhaps redirecting your attention from the situation that you're in to this other situation is going to bring some kind of happiness, vitality, and success into your life. Taurus, Taurus, you enter this week with reuniting and reconciliation on your mind. You're considering a message, um, a message to manifest a new opportunity and to transition into a new relationship to reconcile your differences and reunite. You're trying to gain mental clarity about this situation. And in the past, there's been no progress, but you're now being asked to prioritize your feelings in regard to this situation. There's been some betrayal and some deceit, some kind of shady behavior that's happened between you in the past. But if you can break free from those mental challenges, there may be an opportunity to create something of substance here. You're being asked to take the conflict from the past and create a new increased focus on your goals here. You're digging deep to find some inner strength because the situation is about recommitting yourself with messages about exploration and discovery in this reuniting and reconciling. You've been asked to, to reconsider giving and receiving with someone from your past where there's been heartbreak, sorrow, grief, and pain. But now they're asking you to reconsider the future and coming to you with messages of feelings and wanting a new beginning and a new journey, promising wishes fulfilled, comfort, happiness, and satisfaction. Taurus, this week is all about major decisions in regards to reuniting or reconciling with someone or something from your past. Gemini, you come into this week needing to make a very important decision. After much contemplation and reevaluation, mental struggles and burden, you're being asked to make a final decision about exploring a brand new opportunity that has the potential to bring much stability and structure into your life. However, in the back of your mind, you're hoping that you won't regret this as this will be a turning point in your life. 
you're making this decision after much temperance has been displayed, balance, patience, purpose, and moderation. Much courage has been manifested, and the conflict or, or, or regret that you're contemplating is being turned into an increased focus on your goals. You have some kind of revelation, an epiphany, about what it is that you want to invest your time and efforts to in regards to this situation. Um, this causes a transition in the way that you think about the situation and the way that you're going to engage with it, right? There's something to do with teamwork and collaboration here that is going to bring you a brand new beginning and a brand new journey this week. Cancer, you enter into this week bringing, bringing a culmination to a situation. After much anxiety and despair about selfishness, you are withdrawing your emotions and stopping a cycle. After much contemplation and reassessment of the limited profit and reward you're receiving from this investment, with much frustration, you're going to avert a disaster because this entire situation revolves around an attachment that's a restriction to your personal growth. Towards the end of the week, you'll be reflecting upon how you may feel foolish or naive to engage in this situation in the first place. Leo, you open this reading contemplating an attachment that's a restriction to your personal growth, an attachment that is a restriction to victory, progress, and success in your life. At one point, you thought perhaps this situation was going to lead to an expansion, but now all you see is lack of harmony. And after some kind of an epiphany that's going to be brought your way in regards to this situation, the ultimate decision is that you're going to walk away and chalk it up to a lost opportunity. You feel this is the only way to bring justice to the situation, and you have zero regard for the consequences. This sets you free, and you begin to move into the rest of your week with feelings of inspiration to plan for your future because, because the lack of, of, of teamwork and collaboration or the lack of regard for your skill set um, was completely unrealistic to keep investing in. This is a turning point in your life, and this will happen very, very quickly as the end of the week nears. Okay, where are we at? We're at Virgo. Virgo, your week begins with thoughts of disengaging from a love or a, or a partnership situation that's proving to be unrealistic and, quite frankly, a lost opportunity. Yeah, you're going to take some inspired action to get some absolute mental clarity about some kind of imbalance in this relationship. You end the week with a personal transformation after doing some inner purging in regards to this relationship or commitment, and you ultimately put an end to this cycle by the end of the week, Virgo. <coughs> Excuse me. Libra, your energy this week is very short and direct and to the point. You open this week with feelings of loss, regret, despair, and dissatisfaction, and you're going to break free from the mental turmoil that's associated with this. These are feelings of intense anxiety and despair, and you're simply going to withdraw and disconnect from the situation, said and done. That is, that is the energy of your week is withdrawal and disconnection. Scorpio. Scorpio, you enter into this week contemplating a creative block, meaning, meaning nothing is being created in this situation. You are blocking creation in whatever this situation is for you. You're diving into your intuition and your subconscious mind, and you're trying to decide how to move forward with victory, progress, and success towards reuniting and reconciling with somebody from your past. You would like to bring justice to the situation where there was unfairness to bring fairness, where there was a lack of accountability to bring accountability to make right a wrong. You're exhibiting temperance, though. You're sitting still and you're contemplating, sitting still and contemplating, balancing patience, purpose, moderation. You're not going to jump into this without some patience. You're manifesting this into your life this week 
with a disregard for consequences when it comes to expressing your desire to reunite or reconcile with someone from your past that was you you see as a lost opportunity. You see this reuniting and reconciling as bringing harmony, happiness, and values alignment into your life, and you want to transform this situation into a two of cups, unified love or unified partnership, and begin a new cycle, reuniting and reconciling. Sagittarius, you open this week doing some contemplation, some evaluation, and some assessment of a situation that at one time brought you a lot of happiness and vitality and success. But now you're chalking it up to being a lost opportunity that has come to an end. This is a turning point in your life, and there is a revelation or some kind of awakening that's about to be brought to you in regards to a third-party situation in this love relationship or this partnership. The ending of this relationship is going to bring great abundance into your life as you close one chapter and begin another. Capricorn, you enter into this week with the message of creating a new beginning, most likely in the realm of your career. However, there's some anxiety and despair that you experience while contemplating the viability of this offer. This will be an inspired, creative new beginning for you that will bring much public recognition, victory, and progress, success into your life. It will bring you into feelings of security, control, power, discipline, and abundance. And after much contemplation and reevaluation, you'll come to the mental clarity that, that, that you must make an absolute decision about this position. Towards the end of the week, you're going to have the clarity that you need to make a decision about this position. Pisces. Pisces, you come into this week with some kind of a message, some kind of a message being brought to you that brings you a lot of mental clarity about victory, progress, and success when it comes to the Knight of Cups. This is a, a, a metaphorical knight in shining armor, whether this is a love relationship or a business relationship. Somebody is bringing you an offer of of wishes fulfilled. The chariot comes in and tells me that this requires action on your part and that action is to whether to 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 share your feelings with this person or not. This person or this entity wants to create, wants to manifest a brand new beginning with you and bring a culmination to the situation that was and recreate a new situation with you. The Eight of Pentacles tells me that, that this message that comes to you at the beginning of the week is about engaging. It's about engaging and working on things, trying to gain mastery. So as the week moves on, Pisces, you are going to come into a, an energy of breaking free of the mental turmoil that was associated when this message first came in at the beginning of the week. And I do believe, Pisces, that you are going to at least attempt to engage with this person and try to Try to create something of substance. Aries, you, Aries, I'm sorry, Aquarius, you enter into this week with the Three of Swords. There's some heartbreak, some pain, some grief that, just, that revolves around some kind of commitment in your life that has come to a complete and total conclusion, a culmination. The Six of Swords tells me that you're going to make a regretful but necessary transition because there's lack of direction in this relationship. Temperance comes in and tells me that you are going to exhibit patience, purpose, balance, and moderation when it comes to creating any kind of abundance um, in your life, these cards actually, I'm actually doing this reading live right here on the phone because I didn't get to Pisces yet. So, I'm sorry, Aquarius. I have not gotten to Aquarius yet. Aquarius, you would like to manifest some kind of abundance with someone from your past. You would like to reunite and reconcile. So, Aquarius, you open the week with heartbreak and grief and sorrow in regards to some kind of committed relationship coming to an end. 
you are going to transition out of this relationship because there is a lack of direction. What you're doing with the temperance card is you're sitting and you're thinking, you're pondering and contemplating, building abundance with someone from your past, reuniting and reconciling. And now that this this commitment has ended for you, you are going to move towards reuniting and reconciling with someone in your past by bringing forth a message of creating a new beginning. The Nine of Wands tells me that you're trying to gather some courage to come forward to this person to reconcile your differences from the past. And the Ace of Pentacles in reverse tells me that this is a lost opportunity, something that just quite didn't work out before because there was some kind of lack of teamwork and collaboration. However, now you want to move forward with the Ace of Wands and create and take inspired action to create a new passionate beginning with this person, a new passionate beginning. What you want is a Two of Cups relationship, unified love. You want to come out of the mental turmoil that has surrounded your decision-making process as to how and when you're going to go forward to this person from your past. And the Eight of Swords tells me that you are breaking free and coming out on the other side with a new perspective. Judgment comes in and says you're going to make an absolute decision because the Ace of Swords tells me that you have some mental clarity about how it is you're going to create stability, structure, and foundation in your desire to reunite or reconcile with someone from your past. And, Mike, there you go. That is your weekly psychic forecast for all 12 signs of the Zodiac. Do you have any questions? Uh, no, uh, not really, but I really <laughs> love hearing the different uh, signs and, and what's going on with them. I think it's so interesting. Uh, do you feel that, um, you know, astrology kind of really just shows, you know, not only an understanding of oneself, but what to kind of prepare for, you know, or how, how to kind of go through life and, and make certain decisions when it comes to career or relationships and things like that? Oh, yeah. You know, the, the, the tarot, you know, I, I, the tarot or the esoteric principles are a little bit different than astrology. But to address your question directly, astrology definitely gives us an inside take on what it is we should expect from other people as we use the, 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 the planetary positioning to, and I don't want to use the word manipulate in a derogatory way, but you can manipulate the entire situation based on the planetary positions in your chart on that day. Actually, recorded history, this is like recorded history. Nancy Reagan used to follow an astrologer named Linda Goodman. Linda Goodman is like the creme de la creme, top-of-the-line astrologer. She's passed on now. But this is, I mean, if you read, if you read Nancy Reagan's biography, she would consult with this astrologer when Ronnie needed to make huge decisions. And if you go back and do the history, all of Ronald Reagan's successful decisions that he made during his presidency were 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 based on the astrological positionings of the planets on the day that he executed these decisions. And that's not me making stuff up. Y'all can Google that. That is the God's honest truth. So knowing what these planetary positions are will help you to be able to create the best possible situation in order to execute what it is that you need to execute in your life. Now, when we talk about tarot, now there is astrology in, in, embodied in tarot. But I'm just going to give you an example. I just did a reading. I'm not kidding you. That's why I was kind of late getting these together for the show today. I did a reading with a businessman out of New York City, no less, okay? Mm-hmm. And he is, and there's no names here. Nobody can identify this person. So I'm going to share this on the air. He has been married for 20 years. He, he and his, he want, he's been married for 20 years and he's having an extramarital affair with his boss. Okay? He's having an extramarital affair with his boss. He came to me to see how it is that this affair is going to work out, how this new relationship, and he wants to divorce his wife and go head into this whole relationship, right? 
Well, we did his tarot card reading, and the relationship blew up in his face. As, the, as time progressed and the relationship went on, this new relationship that he's leaving his wife of 20 years to pursue ends up blowing up in his face. And as I read him the cards, there was absolute certainty, absolute confirmation of his own intuition that that is eventually how things would work out. And then he's like, well, what happens when I go back to my wife? And the card said, obviously, well, not obviously, because some women are different, right? Some spouses are different. But this particular spouse was like, not only no, but oh, heck no. No, this isn't happening. So if he had not gotten this tarot card reading from me, he would have left his wife of 20 years, went into this new relationship with this, with this person, and it would have blown up in his face. He would have lost his wife. He would have lost this relationship and, quite frankly, would have lost his job as well. So now that he has this inside information urging him, advice from spirit, urging him not to make this detrimental decision in his life, will he go back and consider, reconsider everything? Well, when we got off the phone, he was absolutely reconsidering everything, right? Why would he throw his marriage away for a relationship that was going to blow up in his face and get him fired from his job? Now he has the insight to make the decisions that he needs to make to divert a de- a, a, an absolute disaster in his life. And I can't tell you how, how, how thankful he was for the inside information, right? So that's how a tarot card reading can help you to plan your life. If you see anything in a tarot card reading and you're like, oh, no, 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 I don't want things to go that way, you now have the inside information to act differently in order to have the people that are responding to your actions react differently. You can control, you can't control other people, but your input is how other people react. So adjusting your input into a situation can adjust how that person is going to react to you, and you can completely and totally move these cards in another direction. I do readings for businessmen all the time, high-powered businessmen who have millions and millions of dollars on the line, and we hop into the mind of the people that they are dealing with, and we see where they're coming from and what their intentions are in the relationship. And um, it helps people to, to make and lose money. It helps people to keep and lose relationships. And it really, really is an extremely valuable tool into the inner workings of a situation where perhaps you don't have the best perspective because you're in the middle of it all. Right? Yeah. That is yeah. very, very fascinating. Just the fact that from, from the reading how much that actually changed and and uh, you know, how many things change in one's life. Now, you know, something you said before you did your readings is, you know, not to necessarily interpret things in the literal sense. Can you explain a little bit more, you know, why you said that and, and you know, how people should perceive um, some of the readings? Okay, um, I'm I'm a little confused at what you're asking me. Say it one more time. Well, you know, before you actually did your readings, you know, you kind of mentioned that, um, you know, when you're hearing the readings, not to necessarily uh, oh. take it as a literal, a literal word for word. You know, say right. if you talk about a partner, it's not necessarily right always on. romantic or and things right like on. that. The best analogy that I can use for this, because these are general readings, right? I'm not reading for somebody in front of me. I'm not channeling an actual person's energy. What I'm doing is channeling an overall thread that's going to go through the sign of, let's say, Taurus, right? It's kind of the analogy that I use as a stereotype, okay? Now, there's stereotypes for all kinds of different demographics and people. So you're driving past a crowd of people, and the stereotype immediately pops in your head, right? Now, stereotype is for a reason because some of the people in that crowd that you're passing fit that stereotype. 
But once you get to know the people in that crowd, that stereotype is no longer a blanket, right? That stereotype is, is an individual opinion that you formulate about somebody. And it's the same thing with a general reading. Just like the videos that I do on YouTube, they're general readings for the zodiac sign. Is there a common thread that sews through all of it? Yes. But each and every person's individual situation dictates how that thread is sewn into a cloth. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate um, kind of putting that message out there for people to understand. And where can people go to find out more information about you and your services? Right, deepthoughtswithdana.com is where you can go to find out everything about me and schedule an appointment. You can follow me on YouTube at Deep Thoughts with Dana. And, hey, right now I'm having a sale for people who subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, you can get an amazing deal with a $50 reading if you subscribe to my YouTube channel and schedule before uh, August 1st. First, which is not very very far from today, but yeah, if you go to my YouTube channel, Deep Thoughts with Dana, and schedule a reading with me before August 1st, um, you'll get a $50 intro tarot card reading from me, and I can promise you, I will blow your mind. Sounds good. Well, Dana, once again, thank you so much for taking the time out and giving us insight and information and sharing that with our audience today. I always do enjoy it. Thank you so much. You bet, Mike. Thank you. I enjoy the uh, opportunity. Y'all have an amazing day. You as well. And we definitely look forward to speaking with you again soon. And for everyone else out there, please stay tuned. We're going to be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. my kids in the right car seat well i think he is yeah my kids in a booster seat he was ready to move up he is ready right her car seat looks like the right size there are probably rules on when to move up to a booster seat aren't there rear facing forward facing i think i have it right <laughs> Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? Don't think you know. Know you know. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat. I know my child's in the right car seat. Or else I wouldn't get in the driver's seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. 